The Dala Jada is a massive salmon endemic to Chimir. They are closest related to the earth salmon of the genus Hucho. Unlike their relatives, and indeed the others of their genus, like the river salmon found throughout the known world, the Dala Jada is a marine species. Hunting in the polar sea has made them massive. Many reach maturity at five to six years old, being around eight feet long and between two and three hundred pounds, while others remain in the ocean until they are ten years old, often exceeding ten feet long and weighing a quarter of a ton or more. Although they spend their adult lives growing massive in the ocean, it is their freshwater spawning that makes them a keystone species in Picardia. Ever since their ancestors first came to Picardia eight million years ago, the Dala Jada has returned to the Great Lakes of the Highlands to spawn. This trip from the Polar Seas, in which they spend five to ten years growing on a diet of penguins, smaller fish, and filter-feeding krill, is over a thousand-mile swim. They have spent years building up strength and endurance. Each salmon is in prime condition. Swimming from the Polar Sea is the easy part. Waiting for them at the mouths of all major rivers is a collection of large marine predators, which know that every year at the end of the dry season, hundreds of thousands of fish will congregate. The Dalajada is armed with powerful jaws and large teeth, quite capable of defending themselves, so only the largest predators participate in this attack. The fish are singularly focused on migration, though, so only bite when grabbed. Cetaceans? Elasmosaurs and mosasaurs assemble from resident populations and from thousands of miles away to feast on choice parts of these huge fish. It is at this stage that smaller predators will come in, feeding on the scrap left by the larger predators. Once the Dalajada reaches the rivers, the next stage begins. Waiting for them are Megaraptorans, namely the aquatic Kurajaku and long-legged Orotaku. Kurojaku are ecosystem engineers who maintain the health and flow of rivers, and this means they know where the choice spots are to wait for the salmon they know will come. Large Kurojaku can position their own bodies as a dam, using their great tails to herd fish into easy biting range. Orotaku are normally specialists in terrestrial parksosaurs and ungulates, but their long jaws and gaffing hook claws translate well to catching and dispatching Dalajada. The black feathers of Orotaku mean they generally have a better time hunting at night, but they are known to flare up their white ruff during the day, which seems to help them avoid detection before the strike. In both species, a majority of the animals at the rivers are subadults. These animals do not yet have established territory. This great influx of calories gives them the fortitude that they need for females to lay their first clutch of eggs, and for both sexes to establish their own territories further inland. Adults of both species do come, but they are not as common, not wishing for their territories to be taken over during their absence. Although sometimes they swallow entire fish, mostly the Megaraptorans will pull apart their catch, eating preferred parts such as caviar and collar meat, and leave the rest. The Great Waste provides food for hyenas, dromaeosaurs, big cats, bears, juvenile megaraptorans, and many other scavengers who wish for their slice of the pie. With dozens of fish killed along each mile of the river, there's plenty for all, although there is still a lot of squabbling, both for choice morsels and to establish social hierarchy. Humans will also come to this buffet. Sometimes they will need to spear a fish or two, but often they can simply walk amongst the predators all filled round to the brim, put a few Dalajada on a stretcher, and return to their village with enough salmon to make jerky to be enjoyed for months. The Picardians believe that the Dalajada should be the main course for women with child, which is reflected in their name, being a compression of the sentence, the river's gift to mothers, in the language of the Confederacy. Finally, after swimming through the gauntlet of predator-filled winding rivers, pushing through rapids, fighting currents, and leaping up waterfalls, the exhausted salmon reach the great lakes of the highlands, and it is here that they spawn. Interestingly, there is a roughly equal ratio of the 200-pound 5-year-old Dalajada and the 500-pound Denarians as there were at the beginning of the run. The smaller fish have an easier time evading predators and maneuvering around obstacles, whereas the giant salmon can shrug off all but the largest attackers if they do get caught. 
In having a mix of ages join the run, they stack the deck. There is also a small number in a given run from one of the other river systems, which helps strengthen genetic diversity. Most of the Dalajada die after spawning. The journey is simply too exhausting. Unlike most salmon, though, they aren't completely semelperous, a term for animals which only reproduce once in their lifetime. Around 5-10% to of the females, usually the smaller members, survive the spawning and return to the ocean, where they might return as giants a few years later to spawn again. For the majority that die, however, their legacy is a massive transfer of nutrients from the highly productive polar sea into the highlands of Picardia. Hundreds of thousands of fish will die. Some on the riverbeds and nourish the land, while others sink to the bottom of the lakes or flow downriver. All biomes benefit from their sacrifice. This directly helps the Dalajada when, three to four months later, millions of eggs hatch in the shallows of the Great Lakes. The young will spend their first two years in the Great Lakes, growing large in these prolific habitats, then spend around a year in estuaries, particularly in the brackish marshes of the Gulf of Irotame, so their bodies can acclimate to breathing salt water. Once they reach around 5 feet long and 100 pounds, they take to the oceans, where they spend the next few years building up their strength to return and make the same run as their parents made before them. At each stage in this cycle, a small percentage of the population remains in their habitat. The Great Lakes in particular have a resident population of Dalajada that remain where they were spawned, which grow quite large while retaining the gracile brackish morph build, spawning in their resident lake with incoming brethren when they're around five years old. This allows them to occupy as wide a range of niches as possible, ensuring the overall population should anything happen to their habitat at a given point in their ontogeny. The Dalajada is a versatile, perseverant, and highly successful species of fish. Their value to the ecology of Picardia and the people who call the Great Island home cannot be overstated. At each stage of their lives, they are a keystone member of the ecosystem. They are truly a gift to Chimere.